Hey my friend, on this episode we talk all about peptides. We discuss how peptides have exploded in the last few years as natural therapies and we discuss the best peptides for immunity, anti-aging, beauty, brain and mitochondria. Stay tuned for an exciting episode. So Dr. Kent Holtorf is the medical director of the Holtorf Medical Group. He's also the founder of Integrative Peptides, which is dedicated to the training of physicians regarding groundbreaking peptide therapies for their patients, as well as bringing the highest quality natural bioidentical peptides as supplements with unique delivery systems to doctors. Dr. Holtorf is internationally known lecturer, author, innovator in cutting edge research and treatments. He has personally trained numerous physicians across the country in the use of bioidentical hormones, thyroid replacement for complex hypothyroidism syndromes, peptide therapies, stem cells, exosomes, and growth factor treatments, and more. He's been a featured guest on CNBC, ABC News, CNN, Fox News, Good Morning America, and the list goes on and on. So he's quite the celebrity as well. Uh, so before we get started, Dr. Kent asked me to go through some of the disclaimers, and so I'm going to rush to them really quickly, and then we'll yeah, get into the meat that. of the interview. No problem at all. So in the intent of full disclosure, Dr. Kent is the chief medical officer of integrative peptides. The opinions expressed are his and do not necessarily reflect those of integrative peptides. None of the information and claims contained with this presentation were endorsed by integrative peptides uh, and have not been reviewed by the FDA. No states of peptides are meant to endorse or refer to any products offered by integrative peptides. No statements in this presentation or during the summit have been evaluated by the FDA. Products from integrative peptides are not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. As with other studies, the studies mentioned in this presentation and during the summit have limitations that should be considered when evaluating the efficacy of treatment, including peptides and determining the appropriateness of peptide therapy for consumer use. Two more. It is strongly recommended that you read each study in its entirety to best understand the uses, risks, effects, and limitations of the data in a peptide. While studies suggest that these are possible outcomes, integrated peptides does not endorse the use of any of its products for this condition. Studies are discussed, presented, and mentioned are provided for educational use only. Some limitations of many of all the studies discussed, presented, or mentioned may include animal studies, foreign studies, and different variable administration. So I just wanted to bring that up. We can jump now into the interview. Did I miss something, Dr. Kent? Dr. Kent? No, that's that's great. Yeah, you know, it's legally. Okay. Um, yeah. Okay. We'll perfect. So educational uh, talk. So. Yeah. Okay. Well, welcome again to the Anti Aging Summit. You've got a very interesting background, and you just told me before as we were talking that you almost died and peptides saved you. So please tell us that story and how you got into peptides in the first place. Yeah, I'll, I'll give you the short version, but basically, I had. Uh, Lyme, Babesia, Bartonella, was extremely sick, just couldn't function, couldn't get out of bed, was bed bound most of the time. Did, you know, four and a half years of IV antibiotics, five, six, seven at a time at two, three, four times a dose. I would never give a patient and it never helped, you know? And so I'm like, I can't live like this. And I went into heart failure where I couldn't even stand up, like, you know, going upstairs would take me three hours. And the cardiologist said, well, you got a lot of damage that maybe in 10 years you can improve 10%. I'm like, I cannot live like this. So I decided I need to go and find anyone doing anything unique and, and try these things. So I went around the world basically looking for therapies. A lot of, a lot of things help. Uh, but when I found peptides in Europe, I'm like, oh my gosh, something's changed. Something's different. Mm -hmm. I'm starting to feel better and I can breathe. My heart started pumping normally. Um, and then I'm like, you know, I'm feeling pretty damn good. Mm -hmm. uh, but I went back to my cardiologist and, you know, he, he said in 10 years, he maybe 10% better in a year. It was uh, essentially back to normal. And he's like, wow, I've never seen that before. Of course, do they ask what happened or what did you, you take? No, but uh yeah, I mean, a lot of other things help the, you know, stem cells, exosomes, ozone. Um, I mean, so uh, a lot of things, the peptides were the core. Mm -hmm. And it's really changed our practice and our practice focus where, where you know, we, we tend to get people from all over the world that have seen, um, you know, when we did our study 15 years ago, we had 22 centers. Um, people saw an average 7.2 positions before seeing us and about 85 to 90% got significantly better by the fourth visit, 65% dramatically. Now it's probably they've seen 15 positions, you know, the way the whole system is. So we, we tend to get the sick of the sick that have, you know, uh, seen it and uh, everyone, and we've gotten away from the antibiotic 
model Mm -hmm. and found really fix the immune system is the core treatment. And then also add all these other peptides in that are really directed at, oh, they got brain fog, they've got you know, pain, you know, whatever, uh, gastrointestinal dysfunction, whatever it may be, you can really curtail the treatment to that and extremely safe, which is mm-hmm. nice. Yeah. Yeah. I can't wait to get into this. This is exciting. So I'm glad you got well. You look great, by the way. You look very young. I don't know how old you are, but you look like a young man. I'm about uh, 100 and something, me and Yoda. There we go. Yeah. There we go. It's all these peptides, the anti-aging peptides. So Dr. Kent, first of all, for the listeners that don't know what we're talking about, what are peptides and why are they suddenly so hot? Like these are supposedly they've been around for a long time, but why are they so hot suddenly? Yeah. Um, So what the heck is a peptide? And people hear about them and essentially it's a amino acid chain and it's arbitrarily if it's under 50 amino acids it's a peptide if it's over 50 it's a protein so um but we didn't know or actually most people didn't know there have been studies on this stuff in europe and they've been used in europe for 40 years with tons of clinical data and when i when i give a, you know basically a lecture on this peptides, doctors are like how could i have not heard of these things when you just presented 50 studies on this peptide Mm -hmm. Um, and because they just never made it over here because they're not patentable because they're bioidentical and been out for so long. So big pharma didn't pick them up. And most doctors aren't going to read a medical journal. It's a, we wait for the, you know, pharmacy rep to basically come to them. Mm -hmm. Um, So uh, I was basically bringing them in to help myself from Europe, but I couldn't sell them to patients due to regulations. Then I was walking through one of the uh, conferences and saw a company pharmacy that had them available. And I'm like, oh my God. I said, let me even speak for you. I can tell you so many things. Like, who are you? Told the story ended up being, uh, you know, their first speaker, and then it's kind of exploded. When once once doctors realize that how much it can help patients, that uh, it just transforms their practice, and it can help everyone from the person who wants to just optimize their health and live longer, which you know, hence longevity. Yeah. Um, and we'll talk about some of the peptides with that to the weekend warrior wants to, you know, optimize to the sick of the sick, that multi-system illness. Um, they just work well for all these conditions. Mm-hmm. And there's certainly excitement in some communities regarding peptides. I am part of some groups where there's athletes in the mix and they're obviously on top of this, on top of the game, anti-aging uh, folks that want to live a long life and a healthy life are starting to get into some of these. But, and as you said, the people that are the sick of the sick, where they Traditional medicine is not helping them, uh, are obviously using this as well. Now, one thing you said, Dr. Ken, that most people will miss is that these are not patentable so that, you know, the reps, the medical reps that are going to a doctor's offices to train them about new drugs will never bring up peptides because the, the company is not pushing them. And I've spent some time working with big pharma. I was, I was a consultant with Amgen Pharmaceuticals for a while. And so I understood like the drug delivery system and how it's made and then how it's uh, educate the education piece of it to the doctors. So that's, that's very interesting. Now you talked about peptides helping not only specific functions, but also aging and longevity or anti-aging and longevity, which, uh, how do they help that first of all? And then we'll get into the, which ones after. Yeah. And I mean, there's all these theories of aging and, you know, major thing is immune dysfunction. And, you know, the cells, what happens is the cells get senescent. So they, basically are there, but they're barely functioning. And those are the cells that the mitochondria are all dysfunctional, and they're just pumping out all those inflammatory cytokines. And normally cells will go under what's called apoptosis. They'll, they'll self-destruct, they'll die, but they don't have enough energy to do that. And, and then the immune system actually is so key. So immunosessence, uh, where your thymus involutes, so there's a balance to the immune system. So there's like, think of the immune system as two sides. One's Th1, which also goes with T, Tregs, to get stuff inside the cell. And there's Th2, and get stuff outside the cell. No way they're balanced. But as we age with any chronic illness, it gets dysfunctional. And you've got, you don't have enough intracellular immunity. You can't fight your cellular infections. You can't fight cancer. But you have all this inflammation causing all these problems, autoimmunity, 
degenerative diseases. So the key is to snap that back. So the peptides that modulate that are really shown to increase health. And I just uh, figure instead of doing like a mini PowerPoint, I'll mm -hmm. do the old school here. Yeah. So this is your thymus gland here. And you can see how it basically just drops, starts about age 15. And by your age 40, there's no thymus. And that controls that balance. Mm -hmm. And then, so here's basically, I took four hours to do that. So you got to look at that. Go. Um, you know, so the TH1, TH2 balance is off. And that is, and if you were to look at chronic illness, it basically starts right here mm -hmm. and just goes up there. Yeah. And so fixing the immune system is a core treatment for most every chronic illness. And when we look at, you know, doctors will say, let's say someone has chronic fatigue syndrome, fibromyalgia, chronic Lyme, they go, oh, there's no tests that we can do. When we do tests, uh, we can tell how sick the person is if they have chronic Lyme, chronic fatigue syndrome, you know, uh, uh, other these chronic infections and based on their immune system. Mm -hmm. And it totally correlates with health. And the abnormal immune system also affects mitochondrial function. So mm -hmm. mitochondrial function goes down and the cells with mitochondria get dysfunctional. There's no energy being produced. There's basically, you're not burning any calories. And we'll check people when they come in, we'll check their basal metabolic rate. And even just fasting for like significantly dieting for three times will actually drop your basal metabolic rate. And then when you go back to normal eating, you don't go back to normal unless you do something about it. And so when people say I've wrecked my metabolism, they have. And uh, it's one of the things that, you know, uh, people say, oh, yeah, you're just eating bonbons in the, in the closet and, you know, calories in, calories out is not true. Right. It's uh, uh, and then you get inflammation goes along with this and you get inflammation of the hypothalamus. So you get leptin resistance, insulin resistance. So leptin is huge because leptin goes up when you're gain weight, your fat cells treat leptin, so go back to the brain, tell the brain, hey, We've got too much fat stored, start increasing your metabolism, increase your thyroid, decrease your appetite and stop storing fat. But you get the brain gets basically resistant. So it doesn't see the leptin, thinks the body's starving. So now it lowers metabolism, lowers your thyroid, tells your body to store fat and lowers your metabolism. So you got to, you know, fix all these things or, you know, all these diets and, you know, things like that um, just don't work. Right. Yeah. It's, it's, that's, we see that, right? It's like, there's a lot of diets that come on the scene and they're popular for a while, but study after study shows that most people revert back to their original weight within six to 12 months of starting a diet, which is so crazy. And another thing you touched on, which I think people should kind of remember is that after the age of 15, your thymus gland stops regenerating, meaning it's in a state of decline from then on. So it turns into fatty tissue at some point, I think in your forties or fifties, where it's basically not as effective as it was uh, years ago. So anything we can do to keep that immune system healthy is unbelievably important, especially in times during COVID. So maybe that's the first segue, Dr. Kent. Let's talk about some peptides that help us specifically improve immune function. Yeah, so, you know, your, your thymus, we weren't made to live this long. And so we're getting all these degenerative diseases. Um, and so the thymus just goes kaput, basically. So it's kind of, well, why not give back thymic peptides, you know, that's what the thymus secretes. So there's a uh, thymus in alpha one, which is actually improved, uh, approved in about 22 countries for everything from cancer treatments, infections. So it's going to really increase that TH1, right? Mm -hmm. And think of it as a teeter totter. If you increase TH1, you tend to suppress TH2. Now, uh, and then there's thymus in beta four, which is the most abundant thymic peptide. Mm -hmm. um, it kind of does, uh, modulates both. And it also has a lot of rejuvenation uh, properties. Now, the problem with thymus and beta-4, it is, is a longer peptide. It has multiple domains so that do different things. So it has one domain that will grow hair, right? And one domain that will stimulate mast cells, which we don't want. And there's one small domain that actually is the immune modulator, 
and stimulates basically recovery and healing. So what the uh, TB4 frag, active frag, takes that tiny fragment, which is now orally available, which the TB4 molecule would not be, and so you get the immune modulation. You don't have the mast cell stimulation. It doesn't grow hair, but you can take the hair fragment and use that. Mm -hmm. So we're learning how to cut these peptides apart and use them and be able to absorb, maybe be able to use them orally instead of as injections, also cheaper. For instance, TB4 frag is about 10 times as potent as the TB4 whole. It's one-tenth the size. So mm -hmm. it cost that, that much less. So mm -hmm. um, per weight, it's 10 times as potent. So you get that, that stimulation. Then there's thymulin, uh, which I like. It's, um, it also grows hair, uh, very good. It's more anti-inflammatory. So people like Herxheimer's, like, you know, after, you know, with Lyme disease and things. Um, there's thymogen, which is very small, also immune modulator. And then kind of you bring in a totally separate compound, body protection compound 157. So it was discovered in the gut and people think of it as a gut hormone, mm -hmm. but it actually works systemically. And it really lowers that TH2, uh, works against mast cells and also has so many healing properties. And when I give lectures on it, it's kind of a little, almost embarrassing because there's so many studies on so many things that it helps mm -hmm. from traumatic brain injury to gut, you know, it's probably one of the best things for leaky gut and to uh, optimize your gut health, uh, tendons, joints. Yeah, I mean, you, you name it, neurodegenerative diseases, autoimmunity. And it's nice because it's actually equal potent given orally as injectable. So let's say you do 500 micrograms orally, works the same as 500 micron subcutaneous. Mm -hmm. And we really like it. People at the shows, let's say someone has a sore knee they've had for four months or longer. And we say, here, take you know, two of these tonight and two tomorrow. And they come back and they're like, oh my gosh, my knee is totally better. You know? yeah. um, so it's, it's kind of crazy. And you look at the studies and there's just so many studies on so many things. Like one study they did, for um, uh, inflammatory bowel disease and uh, uh, basically uh, traumatic brain injury at the same time, and they work for both, you know. Oh. Okay, uh, so you've touched on a few, obviously the thymosins that help rejuvenate uh, the, um, the thymus gland, and we talked about TB4, thymosin beta-4, that also has some properties with that, with a, a slew of other properties you just mentioned, healing properties. So these two seem to be very good. And the other thing you said is that TB4, at least you can take orally, it goes to the gut and works the same as you would as you, if you injected it. Uh, is that the same for thymosin too, or are we, are we needing to inject thymosin peptides right now? Yeah, well, the, um, all the thymosins need to be injected, uh, thymosin except the TB4 frag, um, that's, so it's a small molecule. It, it absorbs whole actually shown to like reverse diabetic cardiomyopathy, diabetic, um, kidney disease, great at reducing inflammation and fibrosis, fatty liver, all those things. So especially for people, and so many people have like the guts, their gut is so messed up, right? Yeah, From yeah. just all of foods that we're eating, uh, they get leaky gut. And then, so basically all these big proteins get through and now that stimulates that your body's not used to more allergies and sensitivities and now drives the immune system even worse. Mm -hmm. And then also the brain affects the gut. Yeah. So it tells the gut what, what to do. And if you have a diseased uh, body, you're going to have a diseased gut. Mm -hmm. So the nice thing of people, it's always like, oh, they got SIBO treat with antibiotics. And I was on a SIBO uh, conference and I said, really, I think there's more of a symptom than a cause. And of course they wanted to boo me off the stage because they thought SIBO was the end all of everything, but it's a, it's a, you know, basically a two way street. And I think probably who knows this the most Rabar, who's a gastroenterologist in uh, Beverly Hills really sees, and he sees like um, the, um, uh, methane producing bacteria, he immediately sends them for a Lyme test. Mm -hmm. um, 
And because once you give these like, you know, probiotics and trying to fix the gut, it's, you need to fix the systemic because the brain is slowing down the, you know, peristalsis, but it's not secreting what it should. So it's really, you got to fix, and that's a problem. Everything's a, a vicious cycle. Yeah. You know, what's yeah. causing what? Right. So you want to fix multiple things at the same time. Mm-hmm. No, that's, that's fascinating. Now let's talk about an anti-aging peptide that I'm a big fan of. I've done myself. Uh, I, I've, I call it epithelon, but I hear that it's got different ways of pronouncing it. So I'd love to hear what you say. And then why is it special and why should people that want to live longer, healthier lives pay attention to this one? Yeah. So um, epithelon, ep- epitalon, uh, however you want to say it, also pinealion, uh, very similar, uh, a little shorter. But so it works in the pineal gland, which mm. kind of, which basically controls a lot of things. So it's it's in the control above the hypothalamus and pituitary, which then controls like all the hormones mm-hmm. and the thymus. So you give the um, epitalon or epitalon uh, or the pineleon, it will actually one, it will bring melatonin levels back to youthful levels. Okay, mm-hmm. that, that's great. Great for sleep. And I'll talk about a combination for sleep. Yeah. But it also now lowers inflammation of the hypothalamic pituitary function, which is another cause of aging. You get hypothalamic pituitary dysfunction. So you get basically low growth hormone, low hormones, um, you know, uh, uh, basically all the hormones get dropped, mm-hmm. but, but they look okay because you know, doctors look at the rise in these pituitary hormones or TSH when they have hypothalamic pituitary dysfunction, which could be from the uh, low pineal hormones. Um, and but the standard tests look, look normal. So it does a number of things. It increases telomeres, mm-hmm. so it increases to um, uh, telomerase. So if you look at, um, and everything gets controversial, but it's a way of looking at generally the age of your cells. Right. So as your uh, cells age, there's these little caps on the chromosomes that every time it divides, it shrinks and shrinks, and then they can't divide anymore. So the age of your cells, you can tell by the length of these telomeres. So this actually increases your telomere length and makes the cells uh, basically younger mm-hmm. thing called the Hayflick limit um, where cells can only divide about 50 times. And so then they just, they're in trouble and they kind of sit there and they're called senescence mm-hmm. where they're not alive. They're not dead. They're just dysfunctional and they're secreting all these uh, oxidative um, uh, substances and causing a lot of problems. And the epitalian will basically bring those back to healthier cells. And for instance, one study on, this was a rat study, but they gave all these menopausal rats uh, um, epitalin and 75% started menstruating normally, 25% had live births, uh, totally normal. Yeah. And, and so, and also just giving it to people that have been studies on cardiovascular disease, people over 65, Followed them for you know ten to fifteen years. I found that dramatic reduction cuts the mortality, morbidity in half. Dramatic reduction in cardiovascular you know events, you know strokes, heart attacks. Their cardiovascular will get better. Now even better is when you combine a thymosin, so a thymic peptide, mm-hmm. with the epitalian. They did a study of uh, people over sixty five. Followed them for fifteen years. Mm-hmm. And they found giving that combination, even just periodically, they don't have to take it all the time, right. that they had dramatic reduction. They cut the incidence of heart disease in half, cancer in half. And actually, ones that got higher doses, it was cut into a fourth. Wow. And it was shown that their cardiovascular, basically endurance and in, in the cardiovascular system got improved, while the people on the standard controls got worse. Mm. So it really is probably the ultimate anti-aging hormone. Okay. And especially when you combine it with the thymosin. Okay. That's that's a great point. I think my next cycle for the epithelon is coming up in February or March. I'm doing it every six months, which of course there's different protocols out there. But yeah. uh, so I, I'm going to add thymosin to that and, you know, be more like, be more stronger and beat all those diseases much further, kick the can down the road, so to speak. Um, let's talk about 
beauty peptides because people would be interested in what makes their skin glow, what makes aesthetically, uh, what makes them look better. And I've heard of, you know, GHKCU as something that's being touted uh, not only by the beauty industry, but also in the peptide world as something that's helpful internally and topically. So what can you explain GHKCU, Dr. Kent? Yeah. So GHKCU is a, uh, essentially a, a tripeptide. It transports uh, copper uh, in, into the cells. It's shown to increase collagen, hair growth, and our levels decline as we age. So it's kind of known as a um, cosmetic peptide. Mm-hmm. Um, and you, you know, basically run it on and I, it's funny if you see my bathroom, I have so many different versions of peptides and, and you look at, you know, BPC, uh, 157, kind of the same thing. It, you know, lowers that inflammation, but, uh, uh, and the GHK, well, how many genes it, it was like 67, like basically, uh, aging genes it turned off and it turned on like, you know. Uh, basically like, you know, 35 genes that they found, probably even more of anti-aging genes. So that's the thing. When people do genetics, they think genetics is going to cause whatever you have, but it's 80%. That's only 20%. 80% is lifestyle, right. or you can kind of cheat and give these peptides, which tells your body to do these things, and which is like um, the mitochondrial peptides which uh, some will make your body seem like it was fasting, seem like it was exercising. Mm -hmm. And that's another theory of aging is reduction in mitochondrial function. And BPC-157 and TB4 also uh, stimulate mitochondrial function. But yeah, the GHK, it's kind of like BPC-157. It really rejuvenates and is anti-aging and like just naming all the things would take forever. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But, you know, uh, being in LA, everyone wants the cosmetic effect first. Yeah. And so, um, uh, yeah, so it, it's used a lot. But the problem is a lot of stuff on the market, the levels are just too low uh, to do anything. But, um, and I love it combined with exosomes, uh, like GHK, TB4, FRAG, BPC, and then BPC we can make as a cosmetic, you can't do it orally, but you can make it absorb better. It's called P, um, PT BPC. Like you add some uh, basically lipophilic moieties to it, so it gets into the tissue. Mm-hmm. So a lot of these things they never get in, even if they're you know uh, peptides. Because peptides tend to be hydrophilic. They're very they like water. They don't like fat. Yeah. So it's hard to get them to absorb. Some of them have are unique that they will just because of their conformation. They'll have uh, what's called lipophilic. Um, uh, moieties on the outside. So it gets in there, but there's ways that you can make them absorb, but as mm-hmm. a supplement, you can't change it. So uh, you got to go to like nanotechnology and things like that. Yeah. And certainly I think we're going there in the next, even now, but definitely the next few years. Yeah. Uh, if I, I would be bald if it wasn't for peptides, uh, 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 creams that I'm just making all these different versions all the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I have some questions for you about that later on. Uh, okay. So we talked about GHKCU. Uh, obviously, you can, people are using it externally. I use it externally uh, when I'm doing microneedling on my skin because, mm-hmm. as you said, uh, it's easier to absorb, but it also helps uh, wound healing. It also helps with collagen and elastin production. And we can go down the list talking about uh, the benefits of it. Uh, in terms of brain cognition, memory, preserving the brain function, uh, what are some of the top peptides that you recommend or use, Dr. Uh, Dr. Kent? You know, and this is, goes to my heart because, you know, I had, I didn't know, but I knew something was wrong growing up. So I mm-hmm. had Lyme since I was born. My whole family did. You know, my mom, we called her family the sweaters, you know, just drenching <laughs> sweat. Yeah. I would have like one half of my body would be freezing, the other half is dilated and sweating. My arm would stop working, no one knows why. One pupil is always bigger than the other, you know. Mm-hmm. But and then but you still function. But then all of a sudden you get older, you get your immune system gets, you get stress. Stress is a killer. Yeah. Stress, we think of it lowering the immune system, but it actually lowers TH1 and increases TH2. Mm-hmm. So it's a lot of people will say, Oh, 
I developed chronic fatigue syndrome right after I, you know, was so stressed or it's controversial. I'm not an anti-vax person, but vaccines can really drive those people that have immune dysfunction or mitochondrial dysfunction are at high risk. In fact, we're uh, starting a vaccine risk mitigation program where mm-hmm. we'll, we'll help fix those things before you take them. But it's scary. Like you can't even talk about a vaccine having a side effect or you're an anti-vaxxer, you know, yeah. and I'm not, vaccines have done some of the greatest things ever, yeah. but they also, in, in people who are going to be prone, can cause a lot of problems. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's just like, well, let's say people get Lyme disease, right? If they have nothing else going on, they're probably fine. Their body suppresses it. It's like you're saying, well, I got chicken pox. You think you're over chicken pox, you're not. Your body just suppresses it. But once that TH1 gets low enough, comes back out as shingles, you know, as you get older, um, if you get, you know, mold exposure, stress, toxins, pesticides, heavy metals, Mm -hmm. that's when you start getting all these symptoms and they start, you know, occurring things like, you know, migraines, PMS, they'll say they have, you know, MS, autoimmune disease, but they don't fit in the categories. But if so many people come in, oh, they say I got pre-lupus or Mixed connective tissue disease, which just means you have all these autoantibodies, but they can't put it in any little, any little thing. But it's also like sarcoidosis and morphia and uh, scleroderma. It's all live. Uh, MS, ALS. Mm-hmm. I have not. We we've had ALS patients come in in wheelchairs. They're now jogging, and they go back to the neurologist and say, and the neurologist, oh, must have been a misdiagnosis. Well, three of you confirm the diagnosis, you know, um, yeah. and immune modulation is a key with those patients. They're all chronically infected um, and the peptides are a key treatment for all of that. Mm-hmm. That's fascinating what you can do. And I think what people have to recognize and appreciate is that peptides are very, very specific in terms of what function they can serve in the body. Yes, they have a lot of uses, but in terms of targeting them, it's much easier than other small molecule drugs because those have unwanted side effects. And to the extent that we know, at least from what I understand, is we can target peptides uh, more locally without unwanted side effects. Would you agree with that, Dr. Kent, or is that not, yeah, not and, a fair statement? I didn't answer your question. I got, I got sidetracked about uh, for uh, brain and cognition. But um, sure. uh yeah, the thing is, you look at the studies, and they've given you know thousand times the dose of like uh, TB4 and BPC. They can't find a toxic dose. Mm-hmm. Try that with any medication. Tylenol, you're dead. Water, you're dead. Right. So it's like you can say it's safer than water. But mm-hmm. yeah, to answer your question, I didn't. In terms of what we like for cognitive, um, you know, because I've had, what I was getting to was I have the worst memory of anyone I've ever met. And ever since I grew up, so I couldn't memorize anything. I had to like learn it. Mm-hmm. Remembering people is embarrassing. For some reason, medicine stuff, I can remember because it's all connected, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, but so a couple of things. One thing that's been around for a long time, cerebralize, which is basically neuroporcine peptide. So they're small molecular weight peptides that has been around for 40 years available in Europe, was available here, uh, studies on Alzheimer's, even just, uh, you know, memory improvement in healthy people, traumatic brain injury, and showing also that, you know, TB4, uh, BPC, uh, cerebralicin, all shown to dramatically reduce the effects of traumatic brain injury, Alzheimer's, and, but the FDA just made cerebralicin a biologic, so you can't give it as injection anymore. Yeah. I, mean, I still have some in my fridge, but now it is available as a supplement because there are small molecular weight peptides that absorb. And the studies show, you know, via EEG changes and, and that, that it, it does absorb orally. Mm-hmm. The other ones are C-Max, C-Link, where they're uh, shown to improve basically the connections in the brain, so the cerebral license. So you really, you get smarter. Mm-hmm. And people like uh, I'll give people a start of it. Kind of reminds me back in college, but now we're doing C Max and C Link and say the other stuff. But um, yeah. and people like I think clearer. Also, people think they they see better at night. There's a lot of things that I 
here, more attentive, works for like ADD, ADHD, which I think the mitochondrial peptides also do, mm-hmm. but uh, the they're called nootropics. So uh, significantly beneficial. There's C-max, C-link, very similar. Um, the C-max is a little more activating or the C-link is shown to really help deal with stress. And I find just subconsciously when I'm stressed, I'm like looking for my C-link, you know, mm-hmm. um, and it, it's a little more calming. It helps you, uh, the body deal with stress. Mm-hmm. So all those are great for brain fog, age-related memory decline, you know, basically neurodegenerative diseases. Um, they're, they work wonderfully in a lot of patients. Mm-hmm. Gotcha. Okay, we're coming up on time, uh, Dr. Kent, but I would be remiss if I didn't ask you about the mitochondrial peptides, which you've touched on a couple of times. As listeners and viewers know that the mitochondria are the energy powerhouses, the factories of every cell. If you have well-functioning mitochondria, your cells will work exactly like they're supposed to, which means full of function, they will work well. Uh, and we're not supposed to age. age ha- aging happens because of disruption and dysfunction and a lot of different pathways. But mitochondrial dysfunction is one of the pathways of aging. So in terms of how to improve mitochondrial biogenesis or, or just the function, what are some of the peptides that are being used now? Yeah, I would say the one that's most available is MOT-C. Mm-hmm. Um, and usually you do it as an injection twice a week, um, a lot of people help with depression, energy. We get, you know, like Lyme patients. They, I mean, they all have mitochondrial dysfunction. Um, another one we really like is 5-amino-1-MQ, which is technically a new drug, so you can't take it orally, but it also works to help cosmetically and improve skin. So uh, that's an option. But we found that when you give it, it uh, we've had... Uh, some like staff's family had OCD, like whereas one college student was just pulling out all her eyebrows within two days, it's gone. And uh, amazing. And uh, bipolar patients, totally stabilized. Uh, Other ones are humanin, which is pretty incredible. Uh, They also work for, you know, diabetes. They normalize blood sugar, lipids very quickly. They work for brain function because they're affecting every cell in the body, you know. Um, and then like SS31, which you can get, but it's under a bunch of trials and it's very expensive to get the dose that's really needed. Got it. But uh, uh, there's a lot of trials on these mitochondrial peptides, right? Now. Yeah, it's definitely an exciting next few years, not only in terms of longevity and anti-aging interventions, but also just these peptides and the regenerative medicine that's coming out. So in terms of... Uh, Dr. Kent, some more details about your office, your practice, what you do, how you work, how you see patients. Can you give us uh, just a little rundown? Yeah. What What do we do? You know, people say, how, you know, about a party or something, what kind of doctor are you? Like, like, I don't know what to say. We're kind of, uh, I hate the term alternative. People think, you know, what are you using? Crystals, integrative, functional medicine, maybe. Um, <laughs> you know, it's, I think we just practice better medicine, you know, mm-hmm. and because right now with the medical system is doctors have no incentive to read a medical journal and then look at that and use that for their patients. They're not allowed to, the hospitals won't let them. So we're really medical detectives. So, you know, we're, we're trying to get more into, we can do great with longevity and prevention, but for good or for bad, we get the patients that are the sick of the sick is kind of our, our thing. But we're looking more and is you know using more you know genetics and you know a lot of these you know you know gut testing full uh, you know really doing a huge battery of tests and really changing that and you can show people that they are now their cells or their, their tissues are younger mm-hmm. you know and they feel better more energy you know optimizing. Uh, you know, we uh, basically started by optimizing thyroid and so many people have normal thyroid levels call. So called normal thyroid levels on the test, but they're low if you do the right tests, you know? Yeah. And so really optimizing things, looking at genetically what they're prone to, but again, genetic, genetic is not your destiny. You can change that. Yeah. And uh, so we use it as a, as a tool to get people. We take people off sometimes off supplements because, Hey, this is not what you need. This is what you need. 
and the peptides play such a core principle. When you just think of aging with the, just that, you know, that thymus curve, like, why not just give back that? Mm-hmm. You would prevent so much disease, you know? Yeah. And uh, just doing some simple things. So give me, you know, T3, uh, give me peptides and uh, maybe a little ozone and some uh, exosomes or stem cells and uh, but really, you know, directed individual medicine. Mm-hmm. And I think that's the difference between so-called standard care. Okay. Gotcha. Well, that's a great rundown of what you do. Um, for folks that are listening, please check out Dr. Ken Toltorf. Easy to find. His practice is based in Torrance, California. So if you are in Cali, I would encourage you to go visit him. Yeah, Dr. Ken. El Segundo. We moved, but yeah. Okay. El Segundo. Got it. Um, Dr. Ken, thank you so much for coming on the Anti-Aging Summit. I appreciate you. Thank you so much. 